Hey everybody, Mark McKenna. Welcome to our last episode for 2023 of the Real Hustle Podcast. So today I really want to focus this towards new agents and things that you can look at and trends because I am very, very uh, tired of people. I'm not a big fan of people who complain, let's say that, about where business is at, okay? Everybody needs to kind of take a look in the mirror and see what you're doing on a daily basis. So today, we're going to hit a couple points, and I think where the trend is, is everybody is either on a team for the most part who wants to start a team, and I think what we're going to do, we're going to try and coach those people up today who want to start a team, okay? And if you're on a team, think about what your team offers, okay? So there's 10 points that we're going to go over today. And like I have, I've had a team, I was one of the first two people in South Jersey. I started the group in 2000, I think it was actually 1999. And the team has grown and grown exponentially. And we're actually at a point that everything that I always dreamed of on how the business would operate, that's where we're at today, okay? And one of the things that I couldn't be more proud of is in a down market where people are off 15, 25, some people are off 50%, top agents are off 50%, and we've seen a growth in our production both on the volume side and on the transaction side. So what that tells me is the systems that we've put into place are working. My agents are, I mean, literally thriving. When we do our one-on-ones throughout the year, I heard comments like, I can't believe I, I paid off all my credit card debt. I can't believe where my, my thought process is. I'm buying my second rental property. I can't believe in such a short period of time, this is what I'm doing. I have an agent in here in his second year. His goal for next year is 60 transactions. 60. Okay? And I think he's light. So... These are the kind of things. So let's talk about, you know, some of these are going to go back and forth. Like the first tip for a team leader, okay, you're not, you're not going to like this, is you have to maintain strong personal production, okay? When, when you get out of production as a team leader, you lose a lot. Agents who are in the day-to-day -day grind They'll look at you different because you're not in the production grind. One of the things that we really talk about in all different facets, hey, I still sell 95 to 100 houses a year myself, okay? Go out there and do it. So I understand the struggles of what's happening. I see the trends. I see what's going on. I help my agents on the listing side of things, make sure I, everything, every different trend that's out there, I, I see that, okay? Can I continue to do that for a long period of time? Probably not, but I think it's important. I mean, I'm a little different. I'm 32 years in. What I see, what I don't like, is a lot of agents who get into the business to start a team is because they want to stop selling. They don't want to work. They want to just build something, and they don't even look at the profitability of their team. Okay, so maintaining a strong personal production. I've talked to some top agents that are out there in the South Jersey and nationally. They're like, I want to get out of production. And I looked them straight in the face. I'm like, you cannot get out of production. You know when you get out of production? When your team's doing $350 million in sales volume or you're doing eight, 900 units, that's when you can afford to step out of production because you've created an absolute machine that is duplicatable, okay? Because you can't depend on it. You still have to bring in a large bit of revenue, okay? So that's, that's one main point for all you people who are team leaders or starting your group. You, cannot, you have to maintain that strong level of production, okay? Number two, uh, recruiting. This is a very sensitive topic. I'm going to talk about recruiting on a different angle. I think it's more important to create and to recruit a strong, strong back office. 
okay? You are only as good as your back office. So you can have the best agents running out there closing. If your back office doesn't have great systems and maintain everything and get things to the table, your customer service will fall off a cliff, okay? This just isn't in the transaction portion of the process, okay, or your listing coordinator or your ISA. This talks about your social media that you're offering for your agents, your video production, okay, your uh, just basic questions about the company, having that person that makes everything smooth so your agents don't have to concentrate on the small details, they can go out and sell, all right? So I look at this and I say to an agent, whenever they come in and talk to us and they say, hey, why should I work here? And I said, well, you should work here because we have seven salary people to make you successful, okay? I have dreamt about this plan that I have uh, to start this business where we take all the expense out of our agent's life. You can go make higher commissions anywhere you want. I, I, I don't, I'm not gonna argue that one bit. We want productive people here because we're gonna make sure your schedule is just filled with income producing things so you can generate more and more and more business. Okay, the proof is in the pudding. That's why we're up 13, 14% in this market that everybody's complaining about. Okay, and getting all your salaried staff people to grow with your business, to see their production. I have to tell you, I'm sure a lot of people can see, in the last year and a half, our social media, along with this amazing podcast, gets better and better and better every week. It does, okay? That's because we have like-minded people that we hire, all right? So I always talk about, you know, with people that you're with, some people in your life are like a rocket ship, okay? When the rocket goes up, a lot of people want to grow with you. And some people are like when the rocket, uh, the portion falls off when it goes into orbit, some people just fall off because they're not on the same path to grow that you are. That's fine. That's what they're there but we are going to be a rocket ship up. And the people that I hire here are on the same path. They're not going to fall off because they buy in, they see what we're doing, and it's something special. And that's what you have to build as a team leader, okay? So, and when you have a ton of turnover in your office, that's not a good sign, okay? So you need to pay people right, bring in people who believe what you believe, so you don't have the turnover. The turnover builds trust throughout your organization, uh, distrust through your organization. When you don't have turnover, people love that. They see the same people there. They see that the people are growing. They see that your business is growing, okay? So, uh, you know, my ISA, along with myself, we worked so hard in September, October, November, and December to make sure we have all our new business plans ready for next year and new products to bring to our agents, okay? That's what you should be doing as a team leader. If you keep doing the same thing, you get the same results, okay? Some things will bring you great results and like any business, you're gonna try different things that are going to fail. So you continually need to tweak and grow and grow and that is, your idea uh, as a team leader, that's where you need to bring this to, all right? So, and keep your ego out of that, all right? So that my, my staff people that I have here, they tell me when I'm doing something wrong, sometimes I just wanna keep believing it's right, but you have to trust their judgment because they're the people that you are going to run the ship eventually, okay? So check your ego out the door and let your, let your staff be part of the decision-making process, okay? And that goes to the next point, learning and understanding retention. If it's retention of agents, okay? What makes them want to work for you? Understand how you can keep them happy. Make sure they're happy. 
okay? And it's all not roses every day in real estate. And you'll, you need to identify when someone is struggling to pull them aside, okay? That's about understanding and retention of people that work for you. Because if you have a team set up the right way, you are going to grow and grow and grow if you're doing the right things because people are going to see what type of environment that you provide, okay? So, and I, I have, I've gotten in some heated uh, discussions with some agents. Like, I don't think an agent should even start a team until they're doing 45 to 50 transactions on their own. Because you need to have that personal production to make sure that you can generate business consistently to help your agents to see how they need to grow their business. Not everybody's great on the phone that can prospect, that can pick up the phone. Other people are just, hey, I'd rather have leads handed to me. And then when they understand that it's a combination of, all right, if I want to take this to the next level, I need to get better on the phone, okay? I need to be better at a listing presentation. This is what I do to get better and better. One day, I want to start my own team. That's great. We encourage that, right? and every team leader should encourage that because you don't want someone who what we call is a zero growth agent. You do not want that person in your organization. You want people who constantly want to get better. Competition is the best thing in a sales organization. It is the best thing, okay? Because the, you're gonna, the people who succeed in this business are competitive people who have the desire and will to make the self, themselves better every year, all right? So that's something that's important, all right? Setting up strong training, okay? You need to, there's a lot of different ways. A lot of people say, hey, I, I, I'm trained, I'm trained, I gotta learn this, I gotta learn that. Yes, you do, you gotta learn what you're doing. But you also have to learn by going out and doing it. So I've talked to other agents out there and a friend of mine, told me, he's like, man, we have the best trained agents in the world, but they're afraid to go out and sell houses. <laughs> I started laughing. So then you got some people who have no idea what they're doing with a ton of energy who want to go out and sell houses. Okay, they're, they're great at getting the contract signed, but after that, the deal falls apart. It's a mix, okay? You can never know everything about real estate, all right? You, need to, you will learn as you go. I had a one-on-one -on -one with one of my agents yesterday. Uh, she went through all her trainings. Uh, she called me in the middle of the year. She's like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. I said, what do you mean? She goes, I have six deals on the contract. I'm like, great, that's what you dreamed of. She was stressed, panicking. We coached her through, she got through this. So her goal last year was 10 houses, 10 deals, she did 12. This year, her goal was 20. It is a different person because she's been through the process with six deals together at one time. And some of them were tough transactions, okay? So the training comes with, it should come within your team, okay? It should come out in the field. You should shadow your agents. You should go on appointments with your agents. You should go on listing appointments with all your agents. Show them the right way to do things. Have fun with it, okay? So it, I'm not gonna lie, when you're selling real estate, and you're building a team and you're doing it the right way, it's a lot of time because you answer every call, you get back to them, you have to have a chain of command so you don't take every phone call, you know, or I'm going to answer all the listing calls and so-and-so is going to answer all the buyer calls and all the transaction-oriented calls will go to this person. You need to build that chain of command, that infrastructure in your organization. That is so important, okay? And I have to say, the, the, the next two items that kind of are probably the most important thing that I have seen in which people are craving the most out there is pure leadership and coaching people up, all right? When you prepare for your sales meetings and you do things and you have structure in your organization, you have to bring value to your sales meetings. I mean... I don't care if it's going over statistics, talking about trends, inspirational quotes, things that strike with these agents. Some of our meetings are actually the funniest thing in the world. We laugh and cry, I mean, literally cry laughing at some of the meetings, okay? And other meetings, like 
when there's constant reminders of things, they can get a little heated, okay? But that's the passion in the business, okay? You need, like, agents come in and they work at companies and it, it like that, to me, what I see out there, what, what we see as the most appreciated thing from our agents is leads, leadership, and leverage. And I think leadership is actually coming into the forefront. As this business gets tougher and tougher, every day you read about a new lawsuit and this thing's happening, your leadership couldn't be more important. So when you're building that team and you're thinking like, hey, Jimmy sold a house last week and so did Sarah, great job. You need to be able to pat people on the back, bring value to the meetings, encourage them, challenge them, okay, on what they do. Never like what you did today means nothing tomorrow. This business changes overnight. I mean, honestly, you can have five deals close in one month, and you just think you're King Kong, and you go on vacation. You're back. You're you're out of money. You're done. The level of consistency that has to go throughout the year comes from leadership telling you to keep grinding. You can never take your foot off the gas pedal. I shouldn't say never. You can go on vacation, you know, blah, blah, blah. But you, you have to go with that same consistent it's consistency every day. It's a grind. You know, and I, it's funny because I see a lot of people who come into this business with expectations of what they're going to do. And then when they're here, they're like, this job is hard. I go, if it was easy, everybody would do it and everybody would make a lot of money. Okay? It is hard. But there's going to be days that are going to be like this and there's going to be days that are like this. So if you're consistent along the way with your schedule, everything's going to happen. And that's what we have to do, you have to do as team leaders, is teach that consistency. Notice when people are drifting off. Call them into your office. Maybe your ISA or yourself have them sit down. You know, you can only coach somebody up so many times before they realize the business isn't for them. Okay? And I think one of the most important things as a team leader is don't hang on to people too long who consistently let you down. I, I mean, I, every person that we hire, we, we like. Okay? There's someone who we think is a good fit to the organization. But you just can't have someone who just keeps sucking the time out of you and just is a negative vibe in the office. So, you know, those conversations are never easy, but it's something that you need us to do as a team lead. We usually know in 30 days if we have someone who's buying in. All right. So really don't don't be held hostage to someone on your team because that is a cancer because they can cause a lot more damage than you actually think. All right. Number six, setting standards. Okay. Setting standards is a great thing. Uh, something I just picked up from somebody else. If you don't sell a house on the team, think about that. If you don't sell a house, 40% of all the agents in the United States did not sell a house. If you don't sell a house with us, you owe us $500 for the year. Okay? Think about that. Huh. Why? I, I'm really not planning on selling a house. I just, just in case something falls in my lap, I want to be here. That's not what we want. That is not what we want. That's not what you should want as a team leader. Okay? Because remember, it, it takes time. It takes away from the profitability. And it actually takes away from your quality of life. So you have to think about those things that are out there. But setting a standard that you should have. Like, you should set your goals every year. Go over, have your one-on-ones. You tell them what you think they can do. First, you ask them what they think their goal is. You tell them if they're shooting too high, they're shooting too low. Because everybody, you can't have everybody in the same standard. Some people just have amazing ability in networks. And other people have to work twice as hard, in my opinion. You set those goals. They achieve the goals. You show the timeline. Okay? What we like to see, first year, if you're a good agent, you're going to sell anywhere from six to ten houses. We feel that's a great year. Second year, 12 to 18. 
okay? The important part is year number three. If you can get in that 18 to 24, you have the ability to go to some really special levels. You could be in that 25 to 35 aid deals a year agent. I mean, that doesn't happen a ton, okay? But I would say one of every 15, 20 agents who come along will be able to do that. They have the capability, they, um, they can deal with the stress, and you, we can help coach them up to that level, okay? 6 to 10, 12 to 18, boom, 18 to 24. That's where you see major growth. Okay, holding the team accountable, all right? You, you're not, it's like being a parent, all right? When your kids get older, you, you, you wanna hang out and be their friend, but you gotta hold them accountable. You gotta hold your team accountable. Some people just like to go to happy hours, I think, all right? Hold them accountable. They will appreciate you as a leader. And you know when you do that, that you're there to help them succeed. You should, and what we have created, uh, we, everybody has accountability partners. I don't care if it's someone in the office, their spouse. So when you have these meetings, where are you at on your goal? Where are you at? What's happening? Are you hitting it? What's your struggles? What's your accountability partner say? Well, I haven't talked to him. Well, you're not doing your job, okay? We don't ask you to show up every morning at 8.30 in the morning and work till 5.30 at night. You have to have accountability for what you do. It's, it's, it's crucial, okay? So number nine, all right? Creating a business plan, all right? As a team leader or an agent, I think it's more important for an agent to create a business plan because a team leader should be in every day at 8.15, 8.30 in the morning, okay? You do have set hours. You're in there making sure everybody's moving and shaking, okay? Making sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to do, helping them with closed deals, putting fires out on deals, making sure you can help them with their offers so their offers are competitive, all these things. Okay? When you're a team leader, you're, you're a coach, you're a psychologist, you're, what, what, you're a parent, you do everything. You do everything. But for agents, they need to have set schedules. They, I mean, if you stay true to your schedule with prospecting, lead follow-up, like every day. If you say, I'm gonna to talk to 200 people a week. It could be Instagram or Facebook messaging. It could be phone calls. It could be texting, whatever. Talk to as many people as you can. Like my, I've had a real estate coach for 23 years. I don't care what you say. If you talk to as many people as you can, and in that business plan, and you say, I need to talk to 200 people a week, you will generate a deal or two a week. If you are that disciplined to this business and commit it, you will succeed at a high level. Everybody has to know with, that you sell real estate at a high level with a great firm. That, that's the name of the game, all right? And when you get that chance, my biggest pet peeve is when you run into people who know, and they ask you the question, how's the market? And 99% of all agents are just go, oh, it's good, yeah, we're busy, it's good, yeah, it's competitive, it's good. That is the wrong answer, <clears throat> wrong answer, okay? That is a great segue to take control of the conversation. The response should be, well, the market's great, we're actually looking for home buyers or sellers now, you know, anybody's thinking about moving? Uh, no, I, I, I don't. Okay, just want to let you know. Hey, when are you thinking about moving? You'll be surprised at the responses. That is taking control of the conversation. Okay, that is what happens. I have probably sold 25 houses off of that simple response. It happens. You'll be surprised. If you don't ask a question, you're never going to get a right answer. So you have to continually ask questions. Okay, so, and the other thing, probably the last thing is keep the business portion of it very simple. I mean, just keep it simple. So, you know, it's, it's not, you don't have to overthink it. People do that. You're going out, you're getting, there's only, 
like six or seven different parts of the business. You got a prospect, okay, to get your appointments. You get appointments, you write offers, you go to contract, and you close, okay? So what you don't want to do is get caught up in the non-income producing things. That's what you need to train your agents to do. Do income producing things. As, a, as an individual agent or someone on the team, you have to look at your day and 60% of what you do should be income producing issues. Okay, so you're out there all the time. I gotta tell you, we door knock, we do a ton of social media, we have different accounts with internet leads, all these different things. There's not one secret, okay? You have to pull a little bit of business from a lot of different places. 2024 is going to be another challenging year. I will guarantee you that. Inventory is gonna stay light for quite some time. So you need to be out there ahead of the curve. If you are not, okay, one of my favorite terms in real estate is, hey, I think I wanna go out and get a real job, okay? So I'm, I'm always say, well, I guess this is a fake job that I've had for 32 years, all right? That's because they're not doing the income generating things and they don't have the discipline and the courage to go out and get this while you can, okay? Go out and get it, all right? There's, there's three ways to get business. A, you can, I always I make a joke about this. It's like dating. A, you can wait for it. B, you can go out and buy it. Or C, you can, out and, you can go out and get it, okay? If you don't go out and get it in 2024, you're going to have a real job, a nine-to-five job, that's, and that's what a lot of people don't want, okay? That's the beauty of this business. You make as much money as hard as you work and as many people as you can help the more people you help and you do an amazing job, the more the business comes back tenfold to you down the road. So as this team concept gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you need to know these 10 core items. This is how you will succeed as a team leader. And if you're on a team, make sure you got that structure. Talk to your team lead. Hey, why don't we do more of this? Why don't we bring some more accountability into it? All these things are gonna make your business flourish in 2024. If your numbers were off last year, and I'm sure a lot of people, when you look at your figures, they are off, okay? You need to really break down what you're doing. Your team lead three things. Leadership, leads, and leverage. That's what you should be getting, all right? Hope you have a great 2024. We got some awesome guests coming up. Uh, every three to five months, I always do a one-on-one -on -one like this. I think the timing's right. Stay motivated. Don't read stuff in Inman News. All those things are telling you this is going to happen, that's going to happen. You practice real estate the same way you always have. And when there's a change, uh, we'll know when that occurs. But just keep grinding and killing it and have a great 2024.